Hey guys, Dave here, and welcome back to another episode of FFBE War of the Visions. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the Behemoth and Tombury raid. Now, the Behemoth um, was designed uh, based on the new unit, Classilia, who will start the spear meta on Global. Uh, so it's about time uh, something other than Slash um, is going to become mainstream, right? Um, and then Kane will be coming later. Um, and kind of filling in some of the blanks there. Uh, then we have Laswell coming in, a uh, new ice unit. There, Glacelia's water, Laswell's ice, and the Tonberry raid is designed around him. Okay, now these will be the two best units for each of the raids, respectively. However, they're not the only units. Uh, now, in this video, I'm going to be adding a couple things I didn't before, um, and I've improved the, my interface quite a bit. And I've taken on some um, suggestions from some of the people on my Discord. Uh, so hopefully everything is uh, a little bit clearer to understand. And hopefully like some of the extra details that I've put in there will, one, answer some of your questions, and two, um, just be useful. Um, but having said that, um, before we get into the meat of the video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about like a rumor um, or, or suspicion um, I've been having. Uh, well, Elena just came out on FFBE um, as a NeoVision. And, you know, we, we got Frave already, which kind of like snuck in out of nowhere. They they swapped around Rain. They swapped around Venera. They swapped around the Tower. Uh, that actually worked to our advantage because Rain <laughs> was really powerful. And we got him earlier than JP did. Um so we're suspecting that maybe Elena is going to come in. Um, and, and I think maybe she'll come before uh, Glacelia to try to get people to spend more when Glacelia does come out. Um, we don't know if it's going to be Elena or not. We don't know when it's going to be. We don't know if it's going to be anytime soon. Basically, we don't know anything, but we have uh, suspicions that there will be one soon. And you know, I would tend to believe that they, they might try to throw Laswell in with that unit like they did with Rain, or they might keep Laswell with Glacelia and bring back, ugh, bring back Freiva for that, which I'm sure much many people would much prefer uh, because some people have seen, uh, you know, because of my video and other videos and whatnot, just how powerful Freiva is uh, if used correctly. Still some kinks in her AI. I heard she still doesn't use full rays in PvP, which is complete bullcrap um, but hopefully they're working on that so I mean they, they are aware of the issue they did fix rays thank you um, but still needs a little work from what I've heard so I just wanted to get that out of the way um, so you know if you're planning on pulling on Glacelia Glaswell uh, but you're also interested in global exclusive units or maybe kind of missed out on Freiva or didn't max her out I just want to throw that out there, so that might throw a monkey wrench in your raid plans, okay? Um, but no, having said that, um, that's all there, so let's jump right in and take a look at the first, uh, first <laughs> behemoth boss. Here we go. All right, so I already said that Glacelia is the best unit for this boss, and it's not going to change, okay? Uh, you know, My objective here is to show you what is going to be best. Again, it's not everything. So I know people are hurt. Oh, you forgot about this unit. Oh, you can use this too. Uh, absolutely. You know, there's more one, more than one way to skin a cat, and there's more than one way to take down the raid boss. However, the the objective of this video is to, you know, put out there and do theory crafting on what I think is the best based on what I've seen on JP and the research that I've done. So it's it's my objective opinion plus uh, raw fact. Okay, so Glacelia will be the best. One of the reasons, if you take a look at the boss, you will see that he has 90 agility. Okay, that is really, really high. So him having 90 agility is going to instantly rule out slow units for this raid uh, for a, a one shot. Because uh, the, the times you'll have to steal time um, will just be so many, you know, five, six times, seven times with a slow team that there's absolutely no way you'd be able to get a one-shot with that, 
All right, so let's take a look at the left-hand side first. We have Glossilia, followed by Ziza, and then Venera. Now, Venera, yes, is a little bit quicker, but the reason that I put Ziza up a little bit higher, even though she might be a couple agility lower, is the fact that she can spec into the Lancer kit. So even though she would break the water chain with Glossilia, uh, she will be able to continue the pierce chain. So I thought that was a major point. Now this boss, in the lower levels, according to the Ultima site, you can slow it. Um, and then slow counter at higher levels has a chance to proc. Okay, I think I said it was only like a 30% chance to proc. But the slow does not work on this boss. So I, right away I thought, oh, what about Ayaka? Uh, she can slow the boss by 50% and then haste the rest of the team uh, each of her turns. Uh, but unfortunately that doesn't work. It's a 0% chance with 70 faith that it would work with that 25% resistance up there. So that was unfortunate. So again, that's the left-hand side there. I mean, ultimately, I mean, you might want to steal time. You might want four Glacelias. Again, I was new to the game very new when this came out. I didn't test max level. There, there are almost zero videos out there. I didn't, actually didn't find any for Glacelia attempts in multiplayer, maybe because it was just too easy that it wasn't worth making a video for. Um, but you have to realize that you know, there aren't as many uh, video creators on the JP side as global. Um, that and they kind of pulse different things. Um, there were a lot of dark team videos, and I will put links in the description below for those. Um, there, there was a long one where they did uh, Bling Stern, a lot of Veneras in there. Um, however, I'll go into the details on that right now. Okay, so on the right-hand side, the dark team, I've put them in no particular order. And you'll notice that there's a couple units missing, like Whisper and Gafgarian and whatnot. Um, the reason I didn't put them up there, can you clear it with them? Yeah, but it's probably going to take you three attempts. Um, and that's ridiculous in my opinion. We, we both know how grindy the raid is. Now, the reason I put those units up there uh, is because they all have a, a pretty decent speed. Okay. Um, the reason I think Venera is the top pick here is she can lower defense, steal time, Steal Vision if she needs to. Uh, seize AP if you're going to go that route and you don't have the bells. Um, and she can do her limit break. So we know from the Chocolate Flan, you know, it might be a close call uh, with her, using her because it's single, 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 and then finally like a triple hit. But she's the fastest of all those units um, when you spec in with her kit. And if, if you give her, you know, I'll show you the espers later for the build. But she's pretty darn fast. Now Bling Stern is also pretty fast, but the problem is um, it's half the chance to get the unit, so not as many people are going to have the unit, and if they, even if they do, he's probably only going to be 79 or 89. So I would say Bling Stern is out of the equation unless you have him at at least 89. 89 is still, in my opinion, NG for this. It's going to be too slow in my opinion. All right, um, so like anything other with like a dark slash team should work. Now I, I saw people throwing in like, uh, Orlandus and stuff like that. I mean, yes, you can throw in other quick slash units and that would work too, but then you also lose the dark element and, you know, higher chances of you having to do multiple attempts. All right. So when we look down at, the, I put a new box in there, semi-auto, full auto, you start out on top of a cliff. He's in, he's in um, I'll, I'll put in a picture later and we'll go over that. But I think full auto is out of the question because there's wolves. And at the beginning of the match, your characters will run to the wolves. I've, I've seen it uh, attack the wolves and then it'll take one to two turns to even get to the boss. So you've lost almost half of your raid just killing the mobs there. Now, uh, semi-auto... Maybe you can move them to the boss the first turn, but you, I think you're still going to have to babysit with this. So I think this is going to be a manual raid. 
I, I, I might be wrong, but from what I've seen, the setup of the map and everything, it looks like to be a manual raid, unfortunately. All right, so let's go in and we'll take a look at how you can set up a Glacelia team for the um, highest damage and whatnot. Okay, so this is the new format that I adopted. I think it's pretty darn easy to understand. Okay, <laughs> so your optimal team is, like I said, you, you might want to throw in a steel time unit. Uh, four Glacelias might just work. Um, you know, we'll have to try it and then see what's better. Like with the Ifrit raid, you know, I thought rain was going to be the dominant thing. And there, there were an awful lot of rain teams. But when people discovered they can do full auto with um, the Mathematician, uh, those teams just skyrocketed uh, with Miranda's as well. So again, uh, we'll have to try it um, multiple attempts, different combinations and whatnot and see what works out the best. But this is, again, just theory crafting. So... Um, there are two different types of lances. There's the dragon bone one. However, all three versions of that have pretty low attack. I think the uh, ice lance has something like 117 or 120, so you get like 30 more points um, than the other crit one because you don't have the dragon killer, but you don't need it for this. Uh, so I think crit is the weapon of choice there for her. If you don't have the weapon, don't worry. I think it comes out the same week as her, so you have a full week. Uh, you can just grind your brains out um, and, and lose sleep and hurt your health to get that up to plus five and then spend 20 minutes and 1,200 clicks to get it up to plus five. Good luck. Then you have the shield of the warrior light thing there. She can wear heavy armor. Um, again, golden armor might give a little bit more defense, but one, you don't really need it too much for this, and two, agility is everything for raids, so you don't want to lose that three agility. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to put the armor there if you don't have the crit version or you have something else You can put it in an Alexandrite ring for the crit um, You know use your own discretion to decide what would be best there uh, then obviously the bells uh, That's a given if you don't have the bells. Um, I think she can use Aldoa's trust So that's probably the second best because you have that extra uh, defense penetration if you don't have Aldoa's trust um, then maybe Ayaka's boots to give you the most AP. Basically, the, your big AP spend or TP spenders because you get half of that back in AP. Uh, so you know, use your best discretion. Uh, Luna Verve might work too. You can use a single one and then use Luna Verve on the group. Uh, that's also a good one from Mediana. Uh, that would benefit the whole group too, and it, it might even work out uh, better doing that in certain combinations or if you throw in a steel time unit the steel time unit uh, doesn't need to use the bells and they can throw on a luna verve so that might be the optimal team right there who knows and now for our bottom row there's three different possible esper choices now again 90 agility is really high but glacelia my glacelia with odin on jp without bells nothing in the agility slot uh, had something like 94 agility, 92 to 94 agility. So she's very fast. Um, if you have max resonance and you put the bells on, I mean, she's almost rivaling Venera's agility. She's in extremely fast. Um, so that's why I put Odin there. You, you, you only benefit really from the attack and the agility, but that might be better than getting the 15% extra damage from the other two. Um, now Titan, I believe, comes out right the week after her, which should be the same week as the raid. So, I mean, you might be able to get them if you save up your Earth Magicites or whatever the heck they're called. You can probably get him up to, you know, like two stars and at least get the stuff there and then maybe uh, use mock guild battles if that still works or just um, auto farm uh like chapter four what was what it called uh goodwill or, or something like that good idea that's what it is uh, so you can just farm that over and over again with like mediana or something like that and get the resonance up really quickly but again always remember resonance 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 um it's huge all right um other but other than that like i think if it um for all intents and purposes, is going to be just as good as Titan. It's just, um, Ifrit has a couple more points in, like, crit for luck, but Titan has, like, 20-some more points of dexterity, 
So in the end, at higher levels, you know, Titan is going to give you more damage for uh, as an investment. For vision cards, on the right-hand side, we have Siren. That's up to 35% since Glacilia is a water unit. Uh, next, we have Over a Snowy Field. Uh, that one is up to 35% for Pierce. Then we have Double-Headed Dragon. Uh, now, Glacilia's main attack she's going to be using is Triple Piercer. It's a triple hit attack, obviously, because it says triple. Um, and then you're probably going to be using her Limit Break, which it's 205%, up to 10,000 uh, extra damage once you max it out. So it, it specifically says that her Limit Break is a Chain Capper. Okay, and I think uh, you do more damage with that when it's a chain. So, like, ideally, you're going to want to build a chain up, you know, for two, probably two turns with each of the Glacilias, maybe three turns, and then cap it out. So, I think it's going to play similarly to the Chocolate Flan with Venera words. Um, was it Armor Cleaver, Armor Cleaver, Armor Cleaver, Limit Break, something like that. So I think, you know, at some point, you know, Double Dragon's going to help. Uh, but if not, if that doesn't turn out to be the best, you can just throw the tank card on there or the new uh, Crystal Chronicles one and get your 50% or 30% attack up there. And then finally, House of the Scion. Um, again, this boss is very fast, um, especially if you're not going the Steel Time route. Uh, you're definitely going to want that in there for the extra agility. But even if you are, that's the difference between you know four to five versus five to six steel times, and that's another turn down right there. So she doesn't benefit from the slash attack, but she does benefit from the attack and the agility on the card. So it has good stats either way. Um, but as far as the double dragon or twin-headed dragon, whatever, um, yeah, we'll have to see whether that or the attack card are better. All right, and then next we have like a four Venera team, which I think might be the best. Um, again, you have the weapon in there, crit or assault, haha, <laughs> ass, yeah. Um, or the uh, mage hat as your armor piece. Now, this this raid, it has wolves. They, they triple hit you, but they hit for bananas. Um, it really did no damage whatsoever, and the boss didn't seem to be doing too much damage. So I don't think it's going to be a big issue. I didn't see any status effects from the wolves or the boss on this one. I, I watched multiple videos. I didn't see any write-ups about it. Um, I didn't do it enough at high level again because I was a new account. Uh, but you might have to adapt based on status effects and stuff like that. But again, I didn't see any. Um, and then obviously, you know, bells, but you can seize AP um, and whatnot as assassin if... Again, you don't have the bells, right? And as for vision cards, uh, the, the Chocobo there is going to be really nice because it has Dark Killer and it has Slash. So that's going to get you the most damage. That's why I put that um, you know, top left, like higher priority over Odin. It has 17 agility. So you lose two agility, but you gain a lot of damage uh, over Odin because you don't benefit from Man Killer on this boss. Uh, again, but he, he looks like a beast. But I was told it's a nether beast um, in this game when it's a beast in FFBE. Uh, I don't know why. But anyways, uh, vision cards, again, uh, speed is important. So House of the Scion for agility. Uh, Venera, she, she hits very hard with single attack. So definitely you want the double-headed dragon in there. Uh, Diablos for 35% dark attacks. And then Echoing Screams for 35% slash attacks. I'm um, Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can swap her out for Bling Stern or any of the other characters, and it wouldn't affect your vision card setup. Uh, you might just have to swap them around, figure out what's best for what character. But I think either way, uh, you want to keep those cards. Okay, so here is what the actual maps look like. Uh, again, thanks to Famitsu for the above one. That's the best one I can find. That's the starting position. So you're you know, basically one turn away from him, and you can see the wolves are one or two turns away from hitting you. So they're going to come in, and they're going to group on the outside, um, which you'll see in some of the videos in the link below, um, once you move in towards the boss. 
Uh, the problem is if you put it on full auto, you're going to go after those wolves and it's going to take you two turns to get down to the boss or he might move off to one side and it might take uh, two, maybe even three turns at worst for another unit there uh, to get over there. So again, that's why I don't think auto and full auto are going to be a thing on this, but you know we'll, we'll have to see. So again, that's what the map looks like there. Um, other than him being very fast and unslowable just about, um, I don't think there's really any status effects, and they didn't seem to hit hard. The wolves didn't seem to have any status effects, but again, it could change on global, and maybe I'm just overlooking something, but I didn't see it in any videos. Then with the Tonebury, I couldn't get, there's only a couple pictures on the net. Uh, you start in the lower right, the uh, mobs start between you and the Tonebury. Tonebury starts right about the top of that arrow is, and then he kind of moves down. Um, so I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but those guys where the zeros are could block your path there. So just be careful with that. And, you know, we'll have to do more testing before we see how it really works. Okay, so Toneberry. Again, uh, Laswell is going to be best for this. I think the second best, uh, you know, Gilgamesh or maybe Victra. Now, there's kind of a tricky mechanic here. Again, I didn't see any status effects. However, if you kill all of the adds, um, if you've played Final Fantasy VIII or whatever, maybe even seven, Tonebury had like a special move grudge, and I think it like it, it didn't mention it on the site, and I didn't actually see it again because I was too low level. But I, I think it just instantly inflects Doom on you and you die. So you, you want to keep um, at least one of the mobs alive, and Victor's limit break can has like a up to a 73% chance to charm them. Uh, so not only are they not going to do damage to you, they might help you do damage, and they're going to stay alive. But they could block your path. That's the only thing. I saw a lot of people use Gilgamesh with Kotetsu to take them down, but again, that's kind of like dangerous. Um, maybe Laswell's Bunshin would eat the um, grudge. You know, but that, those are all things you know, we'll have to test, because unfortunately, I was new at that time, and I don't know. I apologize. So... Uh, the other units that we could use, I saw Agrius's being used in there. I didn't really see them using Victor in the videos, but they did make mention of it. Um, and then we also have Freiva. However, you look, he only has 50 faith, and although she does share the same element and attack type, she pulls from magic, and she's not going to be doing full damage to this unit because, you know, it only has 50 faith. So that's the only thing. Uh, if Freiva is all that you have, you know, I I'm sure people wouldn't uh, bar you from the room, but I, I see uh, Gilgamesh or Victora uh, being, you know, the two other units of choice. Uh, Agrius and Freiva, I, I kind of see them as like the um, black sheep in this, like, oh, I guess if we have to. Um, I, I know they're both good units respectively, but, you know, they're not the most optimal for this raid, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I guess Agrius could she might have a chance to stop the units too, um, but the, the damage might kill them. So, I mean, that's a possibility. If she is able to status effect them like that in one turn, uh, AOE and not hit teammates, then I would say she's usable as well. But again, uh, I don't know, okay? Now this one right here, because of the way the mobs are set up, uh, it might be full autoable, and it might be semi-autoable. Right, so I use the Japanese system of circle, triangle, square. I, I mean X, I'm thinking PlayStation. Um, X means no good, circle means okay, and triangle means, you know, maybe not optimal. So if you ever wondered why when you play PlayStation games, circle is the okay button, uh, it's because of the Japanese culture. I mean, it drives me nuts because most are X, uh, even a lot of Japanese companies who use the Western mindset, <laughs> and I uh, can't get used to them going back and forth. Um, but anyways, that's off topic. Um, I don't really see full auto here. I mean, it's possible, but mm, I just don't know, because you want to try to keep those units alive. Um, we'll just have to see how that works out. Uh, and then semi-auto, I think you, you might have to, you probably can do that, but you might have to babysit it. Uh, but again, you know, things might change. Uh, we get different stuff on global sometimes. Uh, again, let's just wait and see, try it out, and then maybe I can make a video at that time 
uh, on how you can make the auto and semi-auto teams after the raid has already started. All right, so this has four Laswells. I mean, you can swap in one unit, Gilgamesh, uh, Victra. Uh, you're probably going to want to swap one in because of the mob issue. Um, I don't think four would be optimal. Uh, so Osafun, um, if you already have it, great. Uh, if not, you might want to make it if Laswells are going to be your main unit and you don't have Glacelia. Um, and then maybe you could work on the main raid and then get like a, you know, plus two or something and then just take it up to five stars or something like that and then dismantle it later and lose a recipe. I, I don't know. It doesn't seem efficient, uh, but it is possible. And then um, I, I put the mage hat there. I mean, you can swap other things out, but I think... Uh, Laswell is already kind of a dodgy unit, so if you put that on, you know, there might be a chance that even if he does get that grudge uh, aimed at him, if you kill all the mobs or just regular attacks, that he might have a decent chance of dodging it. All right, then you have Echoing Screams up to 35% more damage, uh, the Tank Card or Ifrit, I know mo most people don't <laughs> focus on Ifrit, so that's why I put that one there. Uh, Ifrit would be optimal because it's 50%, that one's only 30%. Uh, then double-headed dragon because Lazo has a double hitter, which he'll be using. Now the Toneberry has a very high defense, but Laswell has I want to say like 60 defense penetration. Uh, maybe you have to use a special ability for that. I, I forget. I, I know like with every all the stars lined up with his limit break, he can get up to 100, but without the limit break, uh, I want to say like 60 something like that. And then House of the Scion there to get you the speed there but you know double dragon when you're hitting there he hits pretty hard so you definitely want to be able to get over 9999 to kill that thing faster it is, is a lot of hit points a lot of spirit and a lot of defense so the key to taking down this toneberry is going to be you know defense piercing and uh, uh yes defense piercing because that's laswell's new thing and that's why he's more optimal uh gilgamesh will certainly help with that more damage but with the defense uh, you're gonna break that so i mean when you're going in here you know just keep in mind that he has very high defense and you're probably going to want to break that somehow or you know again gilgamesh with the 38 percent there i mean maybe the best route will be to kill all those mobs with kotetsu and go in there i saw japanese videos doing that but i didn't see any at level 10 and I didn't see any one-shotting it. Again, there, were, there weren't that many videos out there that I was able to find, but the ones that I was able to find, I will put in the description below. All right, and here's the reward. Uh, it's a UR katana for, basically made for Laswell, 30 ice attack. Uh, you can get up to 20 slash at plus five. So that's, uh, you know, the plus five UR bonus there. So it's very strong. Uh, now, I divided the materials up into two categories. Um, this is kind of based on a suggestion I got. So the top, the green, those are non-limited time. You can farm the black sand. You can buy it on the shop. Um, it's in the story missions. Uh, then the katana books, it, that's an awful lot. But you can trade in two to one other books anytime on the exchange shop uh, if you were unaware of that and you can farm the katana in book events it usually comes around once a month so no big deal there now the the mithril ore um i have seen that um jp had like a th you know how we have the free thing free summon three times a day they had that at maybe three or four times so far since the six month anniversary and the mithril ore did drop in that uh, but other than that I didn't really see it too much in any other future events, so you'll definitely want to pick that up here. Uh, the ice things, you can get those through the Chocobo missions again, same with the Mithril, um, but I don't think they really drop in any other future events, but again, you can pick them up in future raids, same with the Mithril. Uh, and then you have the White Sand. The White Sand comes back for the Cane raid, okay? Oh, well, Cane box event, I'm sorry. Cane box event, and it comes back for the Siren Raid with the uh, Elf Mantle. So if you don't get them all here, you can pick them up. 
at that point. But again, all of those limited time things, they're in that three time a day gotcha that JP had. So you can probably get them in that, assuming we get that on global. All right, and as for the Katana, I put the three versions down below. Um, I decided just to be nice and put up the crappy ones anyway, but aim I think is completely out of the question. Uh, it's, it's very low attack and it's only like six more accuracy than the critical, like LOL. Like it's just poor game design when there, you don't have a choice, right? You don't have to make a choice is what I meant. So. Basically, it's between assault or critical. Um, I would be leaning towards the critical personally because you get, you know, ten more crit and three more accuracy on that, and you're not dropping down too far in damage. So, uh, you know, one twenty-seven. I mean, you're, you're getting thirty percent more damage from the slash. Oh no, I'm sorry, fifty percent uh, from the slash and the ice attack there. So it's already a significant amount. Um, I don't think that. Plus six on the aim with the attack down and the crit down justifies that. I think crit is probably the best one here, followed by assault. And then aim is just, yeah, it, it's not something to aim for, lol. Okay, so for this raid and other ones, again, um, if you're interested in Laswell um, and you're going after him instead of Glacelia or both, or you plan to get him in the future, um, go all out after the item, or, or at least get all the recipes because... Uh, all those are, although those are limited time items, materials, you can pick them up in the future, um, and you're going to get the recipes before you get all those items, uh, because 638, well, you figure, you know, you're going to get certain bonuses, three per run, that's a lot of runs, uh, so you're going to get the recipes before that, so at least get all the recipes so you don't regret it later. Um, the recipes have come back in future raids, so keep in, that in mind too, but it's always most efficient to farm it in that raid. Uh, for example, I, I skimped on the first raid. I didn't get the recipes for the Alexandrite ring, and I didn't get the mats, and now I'm regretting it because uh, it, it costs, you know, what, like five times as much to buy all the smiley faces later. I, I spent all my raid tokens on the last raid on the orange smiley faces, and I'm still way, way off from where I need to be with those. So again, you know, just if you're going after it or you think you might go after it in the future, if you, you do pick up Laswell, uh, at least get your recipes and at least try to farm as many of the mats as you can and then save them off to the side. Uh, that's it. All right, guys, so we're pretty much done here. Long video. Um, again, thanks for watching all the way through. I hope this was really helpful. Please let me know what you thought of the new format and if there's anything you think I can improve on uh, for future like raid preparation and whatnot, I, like something I might have left out. Uh, you know, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Um, unfortunately, with this raid, I didn't get to participate in it a uh, high level, so I, I don't know all the nuances. Uh, but with the future raids, I should be able to help you with that since I did participate in them. Luckily, oh well, Final Fantasy fourteen. I missed that too. Sorry. <laughs> um, again, uh, Discord up on the screen. Uh, come join us uh, if if you enjoy the game. Uh, we we still continue to grow and have an active community there, constantly posting, sharing advice. Uh, we got a great thing today: spreadsheet on exactly how many things you need for the box event and whatnot. Um, also, our guild is. We still have a few slots left. Recruiting, again, almost all the statues are five now. We're in platinum two, barely. Um, you know, we're kind of a casual guild and whatnot, but we do have a couple spots and, you know, we're looking to recruit and fill those up. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, please let me know or Sky on our Discord server. And I will see you guys next time on another episode of FFBE War of the Visions. Take care.